Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of The Topping Show is proudly sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added resource and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. Guys, he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's a joke. If you're an IT leader or a business owner, you can reach out to the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button and tell your friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Now going over to the business part of the podcast, you have Disney streaming finally turning its first profit after losing lots of lots of millions and billions of dollars, which is actually pretty impressive that people are still paying for that, but there's a market for everything. Now this comes to us thanks to the original search engine, Yahoo, specifically the finance division. And they say, quote, Disney earnings streaming unit for the first time show profit while the parks, well, they're uh, not doing so great. Now this is according to Alexandra Canal, who's a writer over there. A little bit of the Disney stock ticker, which again, not financial advice. Shoot, it's always 2020. If I had a magic eight ball, Lord only knows how much would be possible if you actually had one of those for stock, but or you just manipulate the market or know things like Nancy Pelosi. But I partially digress. Now, they say, quote, Disney's fiscal third quarter is direct to consumer streaming business, which includes Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. Post an operating income of $47 million, compared to a loss of $512 million in the same period last year. The company had previously expected to achieve its streaming profitability by the current quarter. Overall, the company reported a Q3 adjusted earnings of $1.39 per share, above the $1.19 that analysts pulled by Bloomberg had expected, and higher than the $1.03 that Disney had reported a year prior. They said that the revenue came in at a whopping $23.2 billion dollars, exceeding the consensus expectations for $23.1 billion and higher than the $22.3 billion they reported a year ago. Eh, I mean, that being said, the big elephant in the room, or donkey in the room, is hyper, you know, inflation's a thing. So, yeah, just compared to last year's money to this year's money, it's, even, it's worth even less thanks to the ineptitudes of the U.S. government on the left and the right. They say, quote, Disney also adjusted, raised its guidance for full-year adjusted earnings growth to 30%, up from prior 25%. Looks like the stock had gone up a little bit, but then would dip back down on the news of this. They say that, quote, looking ahead, Disney said it remains on track for streaming profitability to improve by the fourth quarter, with both direct to consumer entertainment, with posted a loss of 19, 19 uh, million in Q3. EXPN Plus expected to be profitable. This is a good news for him. Bob Iger, the CEO, said, quote, every time we've taken a price increase, we've only seen a modest churn from that, nothing that we would consider significant. He also added his goal for streaming is, quote, to grow engagement on the platform, hence new features and bundling opportunities. Which is astonishing. Even with all the political and economic uncertainty, all businesses, all people struggling, people are still paying for stuff like Disney+. Plus, Which I would argue is the most useless thing you buy right now in terms of 110% of luxury. No one needs it. And there's pretty much unlimited entertainment for free on platforms like YouTube and the big green streaming one that I prefer. As well as you got the free versions of Spotify. It, it blows my mind that even now everyone is struggling. Your grocery prices are out of control. And yet they still pay for Disney Plus. I mean, kudos to Disney. They're convincing people to buy their stuff even now. And yeah, I, I guess you should be too surprised. Americans also have a huge trillions of dollars in credit card debt and all that kind of stuff. But like, yeah, it, it's impressive that Disney can still pump a profit out. And they finally got to that profitability point, which again took billions and some time, but they got to that point finally. Now, will the sales continue to increase for the rest of this calendar year? When, again, nobody on the planet needs Disney+. Plus. It's a ridiculous luxury. Although, it would be fascinating to see the statistics on how many people actually go to the public library to get a public book to read. Probably depressingly small in terms of a percentage point. But let me know, do you know anyone who's still paying for a Google or a Yahoo or Yoohoo? I'm, I'm kidding, I know it's called Hulu. Do you know anyone who actually is still paying for that media platform? Is, I think, what is it? Now, one of my friends loves the Rick and Morty. I think that's an exclusivity contract for streaming through Hulu, produced by Adult Swim, I think. But do you know anyone who like will only buy that platform is that one thing? I think I, anecdotally, I think I do have, I, I have one person I know who pays for that platform. But let me know in the comments. As always, be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. Again, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, leaving a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to 
Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone, just stay safe, fight the good fight.